Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a quick look at Arch Labs. This was uh, just released yesterday for the new version. And if you are used to Arch Labs, this is a radical departure from how they have ran in the past. Um, ultimately, they have rebuilt the installer to have a lot more customization on the front side. And they have gotten rid of the live key, so you cannot actually just boot this into a live distro and install it from there. So uh, here is the press release. Uh, almost. Here is the press release. So it is December, almost the end of the year. Most of us will be preparing for the holidays and the family time. Christmas is just around the corner, so the new, uh, so is the new year, new year. And with that. Nate, the team, and I are happy to present Arch Labs 2018.12 release. It's been almost six months. This brings a different release, as they say. I like that Christmas picture. That's pretty cool. Of course, Arch Labs is it's kind of a um, an Arch spin on the Bunsen Labs. It's based on Arch and Bunsen. Um, originally was based on Openbox. Now it's just kind of merging into its own uh, version of Arch. So they have done away with a live environment. You will go straight into the installer. Actually, you kind of you go right into a terminal prompt with instructions on how to launch the installer. You think they maybe would just want to learn the installer? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, so the instructions are right there. No need for passwords either. Uh, the installer was easy enough to run, which is good. I actually had to run it a few times. I had a few little issues. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so they have a new Arch user repository helper called BAF. I think it's, this is pronounced BAF. They have a pronunciation there. I'm not completely sure um, if that's exactly. Um, and so you can go ahead and uh, see how to use that. And I didn't get a chance to look at the software center there, so we'll kind of jump into it. So you can grab the latest and downloads page. If there's any issues, report them to the forums. So that being said, what we are going to do is we will go ahead and launch this guy up. And then after we actually do a walkthrough, then I'm going to go back and show you how the installation works. Okay, so we are in the startup now. Uh, the initial issue that I had installing it is uh, when I do like Debian, I might throw a couple different desktop environments on there. And I do that just so that I can play around with different ones. I found out that uh, I could not install a variety of desktop environments on this. So if you are wanting to say, hey, we can install different desktop environments, don't do it, at least from the install script. Uh, what ended up happening when I tried to install multiple different desktop environments is it would simply fail to install X. <laughs> So I would get a terminal prompt and nothing else could be done. And so uh, I went back and I said, well, let's just go ahead and install this with Cinnamon. And one of the reasons I wanted to go with Cinnamon is I wanted to get a chance to look at, uh, of course, they have the latest um, uh, the latest version of Cinnamon, which is going to be our four something. Let's get my about the system here. So we'll see what we actually have before I start. Of course, I accidentally clicked in Nemo. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Oh, I keep on wanting to think it's about system info is what we want. All right, so here we are, we are on Arch Linux. We have Simon version 4.0.7. We are on 4.14 kernel. That's a little unsurprising to me that we have such a low kernel. Now, part of this is I was, uh, oh, I know why. Under, I, I know why uh, it happened this way. Uh, the reason it happened this way is, like I said, I installed this several different times and it did not actually take. And the issue was start. So when I went to reinstall it, the two things I did differently is number one is I only picked one desktop environment and number two is I went from the main kernel to the LTS. So since I went down with the LTS kernel, we have 414.88-1. Uh, LTS. There is the option to pick the LTS. Uh, maybe when I run through the installer at the end, we'll go with the non-LTS kernel and a single desktop and see if that actually works. You can see everything else that I have here. Uh, of course, this is a Ryzen 5 1600 virtual machine with four processing cores. I gave it six gigs of RAM. All right, so um, I did keep this uh, with the basic interface. As you know that uh, I am not a big fan of this, but one of the reasons I want to do this video through Cinnamon is 
Um, it is, I want to test if it's possible and it is possible to use the current modern interface without going in. Of course, it's a lot easier to do what cinnamon 19.1 did and have a mint startup screen selecting between the different options, but it is very possible to set this up. I'm going to record that as a separate video, uh, because I will not be doing all my live streams this week. So I'm going to set up just a couple separate videos for us so we can have a chance to see, uh, to see how to do that. But for now, what we have is inside of our system, I, I did set it up. You, you have the option to choose which software you want. So you're not going to get a bloated system. Uh, the software packages that I chose to install, I chose to install disks, uh, the full LibreOffice suite. I did Firefox and the Epiphany browser, which is just web. I installed Thunderbird. Uh, Genie, VLC, and I think that might be all I selected as far as what to install. So everything else, uh, everything else is, uh, is what it would want to install. So I get a system here where we have some of the latest packages. I didn't check the Firefox version. Let's go ahead and do that. Looks like we do have the absolute latest Firefox, which is 64. So we might get some fun pop-ups here as it recommends what we do. Of course, you got to use it for a while to figure that out. Looks like our default search is probably Google. Let's just search for something, see what we get. Blah, we get, we get Google. Uh, that's easy to change later. Uh, I don't remember if the system settings is on here at first. I actually messed around with a panel that kind of converted into what I like the panel to look like and then didn't get a chance to go back. So we do have, uh, we do have our, our theming set up just like this. This is exactly what, what they gave us by default. We have Arch Labs Dark, Arch Labs, Arch Labs Light. Let's go with the dark. And what is nice is they did get, uh, one of the things that I think about Linux Mint Cinnamon is they really have given us a lot more, uh, probably more themes than I like to see in there. It's good to give to have the colors and the options, but this is really is giving us a lot of different options. Whoa, that's a little too dark for me. What's Beam look like? Okay, there's a variety of different things. It looks like our previews aren't loading, so I'm guessing that's probably an error. We should be seeing a preview on each of these individual items. Uh, but I'm not, and it doesn't even look like the previews are necessarily matching to what they should be. So I'm just going to go through and find something that I kind of like. Eh, let's go with that. It's not too dark, but it's not super light either. And then for our desktop, we have one, and that's Cinnamon. Of course, with the Cinnamon, you can come over here, update this, and you can actually install a variety of different themes from over here. So don't be concerned that there's not a lot. You can always go over here and add a lot of the other themes back into it. So it's actually, I don't, I, I don't mind the fact that there's not a lot of themes and it's something not a lot of people necessarily uh, like to look at anyway. So that's okay. Of course, I went with this, just uh, selected this font, uh, this icon pack, which is a little, little interesting for me, but uh, that's okay. Let's see what backgrounds we have. These are, these are just some generic backgrounds. We shouldn't have anything anywhere else. So not a lot of backgrounds to pick from. Looks like I can't go back to the original even if I wanted to. So that's what we got. I'm gonna go with the dark ivy today, I think. So there's our backgrounds. Online accounts, uh, oh, that's the account details. I was looking for online accounts. Do we have online accounts on here? Online accounts, there it is. So it looks like we may not actually have the full online accounts installed by default. So if you did want to use online accounts, uh, you might want to do something a little bit different. I'll have to look into that. Uh, software. Looks like we do not have any software installer. There's a hot corner somewhere. I don't know where that hot corner is from. So again, we don't have any any uh, GUI software installer. I think, uh, come on, I'm getting some search function over there in the desktop. Okay. 
Dude, stop. Uh, I think this version of Cinnamon sucks. Yeah, so we don't have any GUI software installer, so in order to in order to do anything with the software, we're going to have to go into a terminal. I did select, what terminal did I select? I thought I selected Xterm. I'm not seeing a terminal application now. We'll find one. Ooh, I saw one, I think. Hello? HTOP, want to load for me? Well, that's exciting. <laughs> oh boy. I was pretty sure I installed the terminal, but I guess I didn't. Uh, there's a file manager. I'm not seeing a terminal installed. That might have been an oversight from, like I said, it did take me quite a while to get the system running. And uh, so it's very possible I just don't have a terminal installed and HTOP needs a terminal to run. Anyway. Here's the system resources. You can see our CPU is not doing a whole lot. We're running on about a gig of rem memory, which is not too bad for a system. I always like, uh, despite Cinnamon does not run on the lowest amount of memory, it is by far one of the snappier desktops I've seen as far as your modern desktops. And by modern, I'm meaning it has a lot of modern features and functionality. Um, so it looks like I did have an oversight and not put in, not installing a terminal. I think that that was just a uh, just an oversight when I was installing it because I was running through the installer pretty quick to try and get a usable system. So let's go ahead and uh, boot this guy down and we'll go back into the installer now and we'll go ahead and uh, show you how the installer works. Okay, so once we get installed, uh, this is what we have to start with. So we have just a basic terminal and it tells us right here simply run Arch Labs installer so let's go ahead and do that and then we have a simple walkthrough so we're going to start with our language US English uh, keyboard and then we just kind of want to walk through here just use the space to select or deselect options enter to continue tab to go between buttons Etc. Etc. So here's our device tree right now. I have this set up with just the basic SDA1, SDA2, partitions 512, uh, which is ext4, and uh, the other one, which is 19.6. Uh, of course, this is a two gig hard drive in here. We're going to edit the partitions, and there's only one device. And then what I end up doing is just do automatic partitions. It's going to uh, inst uh, basically create two partitions here with the ext4. Um, as both partitions, which is just what it needs. You can see what it's doing. It's doing everything automatically, which is great, so I don't have to mess with partitions and things. So that's okay. Now, we do have the option to configure Lux and LVM. I'm going to go ahead and skip that, but if you are installing this on a real uh, hardware for a real production system, I would encourage you walking through the Lux options. Uh, the, that's going to give us disk full disk encryption is what Lux is going to give us. Here we're going to mount the partitions. This is where we are going to mount the root. We want this on the larger of the partitions. And I'm going to go with ext4. And then here, I think I actually selected disk card this time. I'm going to walk through nearly every setting I remember for the last good known installation. <laughs> that will automatically be selected for an SSD. It allows the auto trimming, which should keep your SSD um, alive longer. So we are going to do that. And do you want a separate boot partition? Let's go ahead and do grub right there. So that is now correct. And I don't need a swap file. Um, you'd use a swap file if you were going to be suspending the computer a lot, things like this. Now we're going to configure the install. This is your domain uh, host name, so Arch Labs is just fine. And then here we want to select our language. I'm just going to push E to get us down into the E's and then go down until I find EN underscore US, which is US English. Of course, if you're not in US English, then you pick somewhere else. So here we've got to go way down till we get down to... New York, which is the city I'm closest to, so yes. And then I'm just going to do Arch Labs for everything. Of course, uh, again, on a production, do not do Arch Labs for everything. 
So I'm if I'm leave the root passwords empty, then whatever I entered for my main user will be used. So we're gonna leave those empty. Then I'm gonna pick bash. And then this is where I picked uh, Linux LTS last time. I'm just gonna go with the regular Linux this time. Uh, do you want a mirror list automatically sorted? It takes longer, but gets faster mirrors. I'm gonna go ahead and do this automatically. E even with automatic, this is not gonna take a long time to install. Now, this is where we wanna select our Windows managers and desktop environments. So you have a variety pick from. We have i3, DWM, Openbox, uh, BSPWM. I'm sorry if there's a better way of saying that. We have GNOME, Cinnamon, Plasma, XFCE. I'm once again gonna go for Cinnamon. Now, this is the time that if I'm running Debian, I usually do something like this. So I have a few different desktop environments to work with. What I found is that when I installed multiple different desktop environments, this was the thing that I consistently did that basically didn't load a Windows manager to start, or a, um, a login manager to start. It didn't load, um, it didn't load uh, the X server. I tried to get that installed manually, even that didn't work. So I'm just gonna select just Cinnamon, that's okay. Here we have, uh, do we want just a console without a login or display manager? And then right here, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick light DM. And then now we're on to select packages. So this is the one where I must have skipped over the terminals thing. I didn't install a terminal. So I'll go ahead and pick Firefox. Uh, I'm about done with uh, done with Chromium. So let's go with Epiphany. Uh, I like having a couple of those. Editors, we can pick a variety of different things. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick the one this time. Terminals, this is what I mixed left last time. So we have a variety of different terminals you can pick from. I'll just go with Xterm multimedia so looking at the things that I would usually install I can do VLC um, maybe Clementine I'm not seeing things like Banshee on here that might be available I just haven't it's just not on this list chat and mail I might do Thunderbird and evolution uh, professional software here's our LibreOffice we can do GIMP we have uh, OBS Studio on here. Caden Live, I'm curious what package versions and simple screen recorder. And then for system, we can do a variety of different things. So um, Thunar is of course the default file manager in XFCE. This is gonna come with Nemo because when you install Cinnamon, you just get a boatload of other things. So I'm gonna use the GNOME disk utility because I always like that being on a system. There's a system monitor. Then there's a variety of other software packages that you can install here as well if you want. Miscellaneous, we can do Steam, uh, various uh, BitTorrent clients. I don't think there's anything here. Maybe I'll play with a Cairo doc, why not? And then done. This is going to check our choices. So now we're gonna go back and see what everything looks like. This is what I went back through and see, hey, did I accidentally not put my light DM uh, thing there, right there, excuse me, right there about the center of the screen, and uh, indeed it is here. It was always there, but for whatever reasons, if I picked multiple desktop environments, it did not want to load. All right, so now we're gonna run through our installation. And this here will probably take me about five or so minutes. It doesn't take long, um, so it's, basically downloading everything, it's gonna be installing, and we will come right back in here at the end, and um, then we'll uh, see what this looks like. Okay, so that actually did take right out five minutes. I've been watching the clock. And so now we get to the screen, it says install, uh, install section is now finished, press any key to continue. Now here we have the option to exit reboot, uh, which is kind of silly because this does not kick the uh, this does not kick the drive out. Of course, it's silly in a virtual machine, duh. Um, now, what I noticed uh, before is we're gonna have a note at number 11 down here, which is the light DM config file. This is the thing that when I first installed this and the thing would only boot to a terminal, I came down here the second install and had a look at this and it actually says the file does not exist. So once again, we are gonna get a system that does not boot. So let's go ahead and exit and uh, reboot. And again, it's going to start our reboot right back into this. I'm going to show you that the system's not going to start. And then we'll, um, I'm guessing maybe it was the, um, maybe it's just the regular kernel. Uh, if you do the LTS, that's the only real thing I think I did differently. But let's go ahead and give it a try and see what it looks like. Okay, so here we are on the reboot. And what it's gonna do is if I come over here and 
start the machine. It looks like it's starting up on us. Now it just sits here on the login prompt. So if we just log in, we can go ahead and log in and we're here. Of course, if you get to this and there's something wrong with a config file, StartX should start us out. But what it's gonna do, it does this, looks like it's gonna go and then it fails. So, sadness. Okay, so now we're gonna, just gonna rerun through the installation again. This time I'm gonna, like, this seems to be the only difference is I ran Linux. This time I'm gonna run the Linux LTS. Okay, so we're gonna check our choices. Everything looks good. Now we're gonna run the install again. Hopefully this won't take quite as long because I didn't pick a lot more packages. Um, but we're gonna see if this runs this time. I'm guessing that the problem is running with the regular Linux seems to not install LightDM on Cinnamon. Um, we'll see. Um, this should be pretty much exactly what I did last time except, hey, I have a terminal this time. Okay, so we finished all of the install. Again, it took about five minutes. Let's go down and see if there's a file. So now we can see there's a file. So I apparently I was incorrect. I don't think it was. Uh, I don't think that it was the uh, the multiple desktop environments. I think it was the the Linux. If you're using the the Linux kernel, the more recent Linux kernel, then it seems to not install like DM uh, or Xorg, for that matter, there seems to be a lot of things missing, but if you go with the Linux LTS, then it does seem to work. We're going to go ahead and shut down <clears throat> and then reboot this guy once we kick the server out, and we should have a functioning system this time. Okay, so here we are. Um, that seemed to be it. So I guess the moral of the story is if you are wanting to, at least if you're wanting to install Cinnamon, then make sure that you are picking the Linux kernel LTS. Now, if any of the viewers out there um, use Arch Labs and have an account on their form, would you please post, uh, post that or test this, whatever else? I don't have an account on the forums, and I'm not a big fan of creating accounts all over the place for every single forum out there. Uh, so hopefully this can be passed out and let me know if you do experiment with this Are you having an issue with cinnamon and the Linux LTS or the the Linux the the non LTS Linux? It appears as though if I want to get this working then I would need to do that so next maybe I should go ahead and Test if I need if I can get this working with multiple desktop environments with the LTS kernel that might actually be the problem so uh, but anyway um, that is just a brief look at the Arch Labs and the installer where you can pick a lot of your own system so basically they're just kind of creating their own system here and uh, creating uh, creating a, a customized Arch system based on a lot of their core and their code which is a good thing more options is uh, is good in some of these respects that's my brief look at Arch Labs. Uh, what is your thoughts on this distribution? Let us know in the comments down below. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.